All right, welcome to Burgess Power Hour, everyone. We are glad to have you here. This is our last Power Hour of 2022. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's the end of 2022. I don't know about you, but if things are quickening, time is going faster and faster and faster. Is that true for all of you out there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Zoom Absolutely. Plan? Yeah. yeah. So um, we're going to record tonight. Um, and anybody who did register for tonight, uh, if you're not on, uh, we missed you. Uh, and you'll get the recording as well. So it'll also um, will be on our, blog, our uh, podcast site as well. So you'll be able to go back and listen to it because we give you a lot of tools and tips and experiences. And those of you who've never been to our power hours, I've been doing this for about eight years now, every month with Essence of Being. And we have one of our beautiful Essence of Being certified coaches uh, playing with us tonight as well, Elisa Lapole. Hello, welcome. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she's um, definitely uh, an added bonus for all of us tonight as well. So we're, you'll be hearing from her. Um, you'll be getting her information and email after this uh, call uh, in the next couple of weeks, just if you need any kind of support or anything that's going on with you with the holidays or anything at all, really. Uh, just a, a little, uh, I don't want to say free, but it is free. It's complimentary. That's the word I want to use. A complimentary, complimentary strategy session uh, just to kind of make sure all is well. Okay, and um, we're glad she's here and all of you listening out there. So we're going to dive right in. And like, like I said, if you've never done this, we're very experiential. Sometimes uh, last month I was in India for two and a half weeks. So last month was the only we, I couldn't go come on live. So we did a self-love meditation that I gave everybody who registered. So it, it was we actually did the power hour, but it was a meditation. So now I'm back. Yay. And uh, yeah, what a, what a, what a time that was, let me tell you. So we had a spiritual retreat that I taught in, in India and um, we'll be doing it again soon. And we would love to have all of you come. We'll be going to Italy and a lot of other places. So um, let's dive in, shall we, into about communication with our loved ones and family. And I guess the title of tonight was family drama, moving to, um, turning family drama into harmony for the holidays. So let's do that, shall we? And definitely want to get something to write with. Uh, we do some experiential uh, things and I'm going to give you a lot of tools to use. Uh, and also uh, we dive into that subconscious place a lot. Uh, that's what we're about here with Essence of Being and our Conscious Leadership Academy. And because our subconscious takes over, doesn't it? It's a dynamic that basically it, we can allow other people, especially in our family of origin, to affect us, okay? So communication with our family of origin, and when I say that, it's people that you might be visiting or have already visited for the holidays uh, that could be challenged, communication challenged. We have a squeaky. Okay. I'm going to, if you don't mind muting yourself, if you have squeakies in the background. That's okay. I will. Sorry. That's okay. Um, and so our old behaviors come out oftentimes. So be, be mindful and present of if you're being reactive, because what happens when we get together with our family and people, family of origin or people that we know pretty well, um, sometimes we can revert back to our two-year-old if you're if we're, you know, around our family and parents and those kind of, you know, older people, uh, or maybe we get real defensive, we might revert back to that feeling of I'm not good enough, or these old triggers can come up. Maybe we've been afraid to tell our truth to our children or our grandkids or sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, whatever. Um, perhaps you are reliving your codependency, you know, where we get codependent, maybe that's, that's very real in a lot of families, right? Uh, you might enable them or they might enable you, or maybe you were the star child, okay? Or you just feel responsible for everybody. So all of these things can happen and, and maybe not all of them have happened to you, but it can bring all that up. Maybe you had fear or retribution in the past, or maybe there's been violence from the past. And that can be very dramatic. 
So it, it could be just as simple as do what I say, not what I do. Maybe you've heard that, or maybe you said that. <laughs> so when you're with your family and with your friends and people that you've known for a long time, it can bring up maybe shame or a shoulda, woulda, coulda. A lot of things can come up around this. Self-judgment can come up during the holidays. Or we judge each other. Or we feel judged. Is that true? Have you experienced yeah. that with your... Yeah. So... Yeah. Uh-huh. So in my family, I'll give you an example of a dynamic that kept repeating itself over and over again when we would ever get together is that people made fun of me. Because in my family, when I was growing up, um, people would make fun of me. And that meant to me that they loved me. So what ended up happening is I became very self-deprecating as I got older and older. Because what I was seeing or feeling or thinking is that if my, if my family's making fun of me, they love me. And that was their terms of endearment. So I yeah. learned that, that, okay, make fun of me, make fun of me. That means you love me. And so I, I sought that out in my in older years. It's like, if you're not making fun of me, or if I make fun of you, that means I love you. So of course, we don't know that when we're growing up. We think that's the way it is, right? Until we get married or we have other relationships or we go out in the world and we realize, oh, not everybody's like that. Oh, okay. I thought, <laughs> I thought that's how everybody responded or reacted to each other so I had to learn okay that that's not necessarily the case that that was just a dynamic but it could pop up so communication with your family if you, and this is true for any place really but it seems really uh triggery if you know what I mean by triggers you just get a reaction right about something that just brings up the past um is the communication is the response you get so if you're getting the kind of response that you'd like, that's great. If you're not, you might want to look at how you're communicating with them. Because you can't change them. I know, I know you've tried. <laughs> <laughs> I know we try. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, but we can't change them necessarily. But what we can do is change how we're communicating. Because oftentimes, this is what happens. People want to blame each other for issues, right? And they want to say, well, they didn't hear me. Well, they don't understand me. Well, they, they, they. Why aren't they listening to me? Why aren't they doing what I told them to do? So it's, it's really about what evidence have you had in your life so far, especially around holidays, family, connecting, right? What belief systems do you have around your own voice? And speaking up, maybe you were reprimanded when you were very little. Maybe you were told to shut up, don't speak. You don't have the right. Your children are seen and not what? Heard. 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 Right? So maybe and, some of you have yeah. had that evidence that, you know, if I speak up, I'm going to get in trouble. Or nice girls don't show anger. Ooh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just like boys don't cry, nice girls don't show anger, suck it up, right? Just swallow it. It comes out what we call uh, passive aggressive, very pissy is what is another way to say it. Women can do that. You know, the girls learn that, oh, I'll show you. I won't be aggressive or assertive with my anger, but I, it's going to come out by cracky so yeah so when we were little this is what we learned we get this evidence whatever that is for you and whatever it has been so it's not okay sometimes to say what we mean and mean what we say and sometimes it's not okay to share our feelings so sometimes it's not okay to say whatever it is that we have in our mind to be truthful because so we hold back or maybe we learned something else you know maybe we learned that at school maybe we were bullied at school Maybe our teachers reprimanded us and told us to, you know, basically that we're wrong. And that shows up in our business life, not just our family. Okay. It can show up in our life with anybody, any kind of relationship. So just kind of notice, just know that the reason why we're talking about this tonight, we're going to go in there and find out what's perhaps how you've been reacting and or what your subconscious beliefs are around your own voice. So that you can shift it because 
here's the thing. Some of you, you may have heard this before, right? Uh, I think Elisa, uh, the, whenever there's conflict, and we're going to give you some tools too. Whenever there's conflict, what happens in our, in our reptilian brain, basically? Uh, we, we either fight or we freeze or we run. So it's flight, fright, flight, freeze, or fight. So when there's a conflict, sometimes we get to choose, okay, am I going to run and hide, not speak? Am I going to fight? And by God, I'm going to be right no matter what. Or are we going to freeze and not speak and just kind of bite our tongue? So these are techniques that our reptilian brain uses, and there's nothing like it when it comes to family of origin. You learn first. Okay. So when you're in a conflict, and I'm going to give you some tools on how to maybe shift out of conflict that you can shift, that's something that you can do. Um, and to keep you from having a foot and mouth disease is what I call it. Um, sometimes you may have, you may put your foot in your mouth and you go, oh, damn, did I just say that? Okay. Right. Did I just say that? Or you may have been saying things to other people where they cringe every time you open your mouth, perhaps. Then, of course, that's reactive. Okay. So you may have been one of those people that just got scared of your own voice because of your You've been hurt or you've been teased or threatened, and maybe you just hide. Or maybe you're one of those people that compensate with your family. It's like you you basically overpower and you become the bully. So just kind of notice there's a lot of different modalities and a lot of different ways that people play with each other, communicate. So what we're going to do, um, that there's a difference between responding and reacting. So when you're responding, you're present. When you're reacting, you're not very present. You're just getting buttons pushed. Okay. And as you know, you've probably heard this or felt this, that the people closest to us can hurt us the most. Why is that? I think it's because we let our guard down and we trust and... You know, they know so much well, about they us. Matter. Yeah. Yes. And they and they matter so much. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Both of those, definitely. So the trust level is up and they matter to us. But they definitely, the people closest to us know how to really, they know us. And they know some of our, perhaps some of our dynamics in the way that we, that we've taught them how to treat us. Okay. So what I'm suggesting is instead of reacting this, this holiday season, be an observer, observe, observe without invalidating yourself. In other words, don't allow them to come into your emotional space because we start invalidating ourselves or doubting ourselves, or maybe we are, maybe we are that, maybe we're not good enough. We should have, would have, could have. And we start catching all the, shame that they're throwing if they're throwing guilt or maybe we're the ones that's throwing the guilt okay so that's there's two thought systems that you can be in and i want you to be able to identify the love thought system and the fear thought system so fear thought system means that you'd rather you'd rather be right than happy so just kind of notice if you start getting into an argument or people start talking and you just, you know, no matter what you want to be right, then it doesn't matter. You'd rather be right than happy. And you're either a guilt thrower or a shame catcher. And that sounds like that's okay. I'll just sit in a corner by myself in the dark. It's all right. No, nope, you go on without me. That's throwing guilt. Okay. And there are people who catch that and they feel ashamed or they're, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. The other thing that we can do is we project. We project our fear and our pain onto them, onto other people, because we don't want to look at it ourselves. So our family and close friends become our mirrors or we allow that. And here's the thing to remember around the holidays and around any time you're with people who know you really well, that everything unlike love comes up for the purpose of healing. 
when there's a lot of love present. Like you said, there's a lot of love, there's trust, there's people we care. And so when there's a lot of love present, what it does is it pushes up everything unlike love for the purpose of healing. Now you have a choice of either healing it or repeating it or not. So you could repeat the same thing over and over again until you don't. But it's always, that's why it continues until you say, I'm going to respond differently. Because if you respond differently, they have to respond differently because it's not the same. You're not in the same vibration. They don't get the same reaction that they're used to. Does that make sense? I mean, it's called imprinting, right? When we're younger, we have uh, like baby birds know their mother no matter what. It's an imprint. So we have an imprint with our family. We're close to them. And so we, it's really easy for us to react and just repeat the same thing over and over again because we revert back to those dynamics. So let's go ahead. I want to do a couple things. I want you to write down um, people in your past that you know trigger you. Perhaps they project onto you or you project onto them, even if they've passed on or maybe even if they're, you're not able to even be with them this holiday season, because that can bring up sadness and that can bring up feeling alone, which is another thing of how to react or respond. So just jot down a couple of people in your life that you know, they know how to push your buttons. And maybe you've had triggers with them before, okay, in the past. Just think of at least one or two people. Does everybody have one? Okay. So the question about that is, all right, so whether you see them or not, okay, and the next time you see them, and like I said, even if they've passed on, it, you can still heal. Because what will happen is, it, they'll keep showing up. The same dynamic keeps showing up. It may not be them, but that person, another person might remind you of them because you haven't healed that part within you. Okay. So how do you have an authentic communication, a conscious communication without judgment around these people? Well, here's a, here's a tip. See them as innocent little children. So whoever you wrote down, just kind of see them as a little innocent child. And you can say, you can actually affirm that and just say, I choose to see their innocence and my own. I choose to see their innocence. So if you're looking at whomever and you're, you're imagining them as a little innocent child, then they can reflect, you can reflect their innocence to them and they can reflect. So in other words, you're projecting innocence, not anything else. So, and it's a really powerful way of just shifting the energy really quick. And perhaps you won't be as reactive because it's, it's harder to be reactive to a little tiny innocent child, isn't it? You want to talk to them a little differently. You want to say something, Lisa? Yeah, like in my family, somebody has to be the bad guy. And so it's not going to be me. You're going to be the bad guy. And so um, shifting to seeing them in innocence removes that whole dynamic. So so thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something that you can do very quickly with anybody, really. And, and you, it'll soften your resolve uh, for a moment anyway. And here's the, here's another tip. And then we're going to write a couple more things is you want to ask before you say anything to anybody, you ask yourself, will this serve me? Or you just say, if I say this, will it serve? Is this something that will serve anybody if I say this? And then you can ask yourself, well, who's it going to serve? How is it going to serve? And what I mean by serve is is this going to really level up? Is this going to raise our vibration in any way at all? Because if you're always looking for the highest good for all concerned and your communication is clear, 
that I, whatever I say, I choose to have the highest good for all concerned. Now it may not, it may be painful to even say things, but it's a, maybe it's in the highest good. So you can ask yourself these questions before you blurt out something. You so again, you ask yourself, will this serve to say it? And I'll give you an example. Will this serve to say it? Yes, I'm hurt. I want to say something. This hurt me. Okay, who's it going to serve? Well, it's going to serve me because then I will feel right and validated that I was hurt. And how is that really going to serve the dynamic? How is that going to serve both of us? It may not. It makes me feel right. And is that the highest good for all concerned? Can I say something? Can I say something just real quick? I was just going to say there was a guidance counselor at my school and she always say, will it help or will it hurt? Perfect. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. And help can look a lot of different ways. You know, it may it may be messy because this is the thing I want to say. Consciousness is messy. It can be OK. Not always, but. Just be willing to understand and know it could get messy before it gets better just because it's a new dynamic, perhaps. So go ahead. We're going to do a little stream of consciousness writing. And what that means is I want you just to I'm going to say a, a three, three statements and I want you just to write down the first thing that comes up to finish these statements. OK, don't edit it. Don't think about it. Don't try to figure it out. Just write down the first thing that comes out of your, your brain. OK. So the first one is, when I feel not heard, I, when I feel not heard, I, just first thing. Okay, I'll just finish up on that one. The second one is, when I feel not seen, I, in other words, if I don't feel people see me, when I feel not seen, I, what do you do? How do you feel? First thing that comes up, don't think about it too long. When I feel not seen. And the third one is, when I feel not understood, I, when I feel not understood, I, So you might have said the same things each time. It may be, there may be a theme there. And just kind of think about or look at what you wrote, what you thought. And there might be some kind of a theme of, or maybe it is different each time. So does anybody want to share anything? I can share. Uh, clearly I um, use the flight. The, 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 the flight technique, I withdraw and uh, get up and leave and then usually end up pouting. <laughs> oh, run and pout. OK. All right. And how's that working for you? Um, it usually then bubbles up to the surface in some other way, like passive aggressiveness, snarky comments. OK. All right. It, and, you know, that's a dynamic that you learn. That's all. And it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so we're going to give you some tools on how to shift that. Anybody else want to share any of that too? Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, this is Jane. I, I just get angry. And so I just get a little more, um, uh, I don't know, bold or, uh, you fight. You fight. I fight. 
I yeah. fight. Definitely fight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you're a fighter. Melissa's a free uh freezer. No, a freezer or a runner? Freezer or a runner. Runner. Okay. Runner. Okay. And what do you do, Patty? You muted yourself, honey. You muted yourself. Uh, I get really frustrated and sad and kind of shrink down. Just go inside and just get small. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, All right. now the thing, the thing oh, you need oh, to mute oh, again. I'm getting an echo. I'm getting an echo for some reason. So here's the thing about that. Whatever you wrote down about, if I'm a runner, I'm a hider, I'm a fighter, whatever it is, I freeze. Um, it's not wrong. And when I say, how's it working for you? You just kind of notice, okay, well, and people don't listen to me or I'm not heard. Or the only way I get heard is if I fight, if you're Jane. Or the only way I get heard is if I, you know, I, or I don't get heard because I don't matter. I'd rather just run and hide and doubt myself and get small. And if we're talking about conscious communication and having harmony for the holidays and having harmony in our life and standing in our power and having our voice and not being afraid of being seen or being afraid of being heard because we have the right to feel and we have the validations to speak. Okay. And especially now, especially women, now that there's just women on right now, but there, I know there are a lot of men who signed up, so I'm not just picking on women, but especially is it's time. It's time for us to be heard. And so part of this, just notice that this is just subconscious. This is deep ingrained in our behavior that we have a choice. Once we identify it and we see ourselves doing it or we notice it, then we can do something about it. We become conscious about it and we can take responsibility for that. So that's how you respond differently. So you can catch yourself shrinking or catch yourself fighting or catch yourself hiding and freezing or whatever. Catch yourself doing it and just do the opposite at that point and take responsibility for that and say, you know what? I take responsibility for my thoughts, my beliefs, my actions and my communication. And I am in a loving environment, even if it's only in my own heart. I am in a loving environment, even if it's in my own heart. That's your authentic self. You're deserving. You are loving. You are powerful. You are innocent. You are creative. You are perfect just the way you are. And you may not believe that 100% totally, but the more you can affirm that for yourself, you, you stop looking for the validation from others. And when you stop looking for validation from others, then that's when your vibration rises up and your consciousness shifts. And that is what they feel from you. Kind of cool how that works. The more you change, the more people around you change. Because they can't respond to you in the same way. Because you, you are responding differently. Another thing that you can do when you're identifying how you're speaking to your family or your friends is just appreciate them. When they come to visit or you go to their place to visit, especially for holidays, where there's a lot of them, or maybe you miss them and they're not there. Uh, appreciate that's a key be grateful and appreciate just one thing maybe they brought a pie maybe it, it maybe the pie sucks but they brought one you know so appreciate at least one thing about them when you're going to see them or talking to them on the phone and what that does appreciation it raises your vibration it is never wasted because if you're vibrating appreciation, then that is what you're going to get back. It may not be getting it back from them, but it's never wasted. Because when you vibe, when you basically, this is quantum physics, okay? 
that your thoughts have a vibration and your energy has a vibration. They've proven that. And so if you're vibrating gratitude or vibrating appreciation for another person, it's never wasted because that's what you're sending out. Now they may, and they may vibrate that and be there too and come back at, and appreciate you. Or it goes through them and it hits somewhere else and somebody else and it still comes back to you. If you believe in like attracts like, if you can understand the concept of that law of attraction or law of appreciation, these a lot of these different universal laws, if you will, of energy, it really it really is true. Law of appreciation works. So if you're having conflicts, I'm going to give you a couple of tools that you can use, okay? So when you're in a, a conversation with somebody, especially family, um, express whatever feelings that you have in a, in a non-blaming way. That's taking responsibility. You're not shaming yourself. You're not blaming them. And you're not making excuses. Okay, because all of those are below the line, what I call below the line, where things just don't change. If you blame her, him, if it doesn't change. It might you might you might bitch, moan, and whine, and it makes you feel better, BMW, but it doesn't change anything. Okay. Also, shame doesn't really change anything if you're feeling ashamed, because that's not a that's a low vibration as well. And if you're making excuses, that doesn't change anything either. You're just justifying. Nothing really changes. So what I say by taking responsibility, you express your feelings in a non-blaming way. And how you do that is you say, I feel, I think, I know. Use a lot of I. And, you know, I know you maybe you've said before, you make me feel like crap. Right. So the, another way to say that is I do, I feel hurt. I don't feel good when you say those things. How that lands on me is it hurts me. Can you see the difference between saying that and you hurt me? Or you you did that to me. You you made you made me feel like crap. So that puts people on a defensive if you do it that way. That gets reactionary. Or you know they say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that." Well, you make me feel like crap. So there. So then you get into the you know the fight situation, and nobody wins. Okay. So again. A non-blaming way. Express your feelings in a non-blaming way. And another way that you can do that is you say, for me, the truth is. Those of you who have taken essence of being, you know that. I say that a lot in our play shops and our workshops. The truth for me is. And if you start a conversation or if you're in a conflict, you can just say, hey, the truth for me is this hurts. Now, they may... Uh, not agree with you, but they cannot argue with you. They cannot argue that that's not your truth. And it may sound kind of weird at first if you're not used to saying that, but what it also does is it it's a pattern interrupt. It interrupts that pattern that you and your family members have always had because you're saying to them, hey, the truth for me is and so you're giving them also a new way of communicating and that you can say it right back to them. What is your truth? How do you feel? The other point here is to listen and seek to understand the other person's point of view before defending your own. I'll say that again. Listen and seek to understand the other person's point of view before defending your own. This could be really relevant. This could be relevant in politics. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Definitely. We're going to go there. 
Elise is great. She she coaches a lot of she's been in the in the political field for a long time and boy, that's a big one, right? Yeah. So I mean, I mean, family is politics, isn't it? Everything's how are you posturing yourself with? So listen and seek to understand the other person's point of view before defending your own, before justifying, because again, no, nobody gets heard. The other pointer I want to give you a tool is focus on what can be done about whatever issue or however feelings or whatever's coming up. Just focus on what can be done, not on what can't be done. Like, what can we do about it? How can we resolve whatever it is? In other words, solve the issue and build the relationship. And what I mean by that is, have you ever been in a conflict with somebody or some argument and, um, you know, you want to come to an agreement, but you just can't agree? So if you can commit to a resolution, okay, you're going to commit to a resolution. What that means is you're not, it's not a compromise. Because this happens all the time in family. Like Elisa was saying about the bad guy, good guy. Who's the bad guy this, this week? The compromise can look like, okay, I'll buy your BS this week, but next week you owe me. So the compromise can be this transactional type of communication. In other words, you're saying, um, I'll compromise, I'll give in, but you better give in, you know, it better be your turn next time. So that's not really a, a resolution. It's not, you're not at peace with it. You know? So what you say is I commit to resolution. And what that can look like is agree to the consensus, the, agree to support the decision. You may disagree with it. You may not want to do it. You may think it's wrong but you are agreeing to support the decision that you're making together. And that is a resolution. You're resolute. You're at peace with it. You're not giving up. You're saying, I, I disagree and I agree to this decision now. It's very nuanced. But it's a tool that you can use, especially if you're in if you're in a relationship or when you are with people that are constantly you're constantly arguing with. And always go back to that love or fear thought system. Would I rather be right than happy, or would I rather be happy than right? I mean, really, my husband and I get into it all the time about who's right. Ad nauseum. <laughs> it's like, can we both be right? So that's give. That's basically saying um, we're coming. We're, we're going to resolve the issue and build a relationship. Because truly, this you know the thing that you have to remember is that the family of origin and people that you're with. This might be the last time you see them. Look at it that way. You want the last words to be whatever. So have respect for the relationship, build that relationship, renew that relationship, have the empathy of just putting yourself in their shoes for a minute before you re react. That's basically this responding versus reacting. So I want to give you one more tool. It's called the Sedona method. Maybe you've used it before. Um, and here it is. So you ask yourself these five questions. What is my now feeling? So let's say you're triggered by what somebody says or you're with your family and something's triggering you. So you say to yourself, what is my now feeling? What am I feeling now? The second one, then you say, could I allow it? The third one is, could I let it go? 
The fourth one is, would I let it go? And the fifth one is, when? So let me play this with one of you. Uh, just think of something in your past where you've had a, a freeze flight fight, you've had some kind of drama, trauma, trigger. Think of that person and let's just play it and I'll show you how it works. Who wants to volunteer? Got some shy people. They don't want to use their voice. Okay. All right. Well, Elisa, I'm going to pick on you. Go. Okay. Pick somebody. Do you want me to pick pick somebody in the group? No, no, no. I meant pick uh, pick somebody that you that you. I'm going to play it out with you. So, like, who? Like, pick somebody we can play that. Like, maybe in the past you've been triggered or they said something. Or... Oh, okay. So, so the uh, the comment would be. Um, you weren't there for me when I really needed you. Okay. So what is my now feeling? Um, so my now feeling would be defensiveness. So you feel defensive. Okay. Can you allow it? Can I allow? That, that, that was a tricky question for me. Can I allow the defense? So when you're, so this is what happens with this. When you're identifying how you feel, you're doing it from a from a mental place. You're doing it from the prefrontal cortex. When I say, "Will you allow it?" Now it drops into your heart, and it drops into your emotional body. So when you say, "I feel defensive," so when I say, "Could you allow it?" It's like, "Yeah, I could allow it in my body, I guess, because that's how I feel or felt." Right. Yeah. I could so allow it kind of drops in a little deeper. So you're allowing it. Mm -hmm. You're allowing yourself to feel that. Could you let it go? Um, Feeling defensive. Yes. Yes or, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Would you let it go? Yes. It yes or no? Yes. When? Now. Oh, well, that was quick. Because usually it doesn't happen that quick, but you're well, you know, that's because I went through mastery. <laughs> <laughs> you're a master. Yes. So, but that's how it works. It's like, what is my now feeling? You identify your feeling, you drop it and could I allow it? Can I let it go? No, I don't want to let it go. Would you let it go? No. When? Never. And then you ask yourself again, what is my now feeling? Now I'm feeling really pissed. Could I allow it? Yeah, I could allow it. Can I let it go? Maybe. Would I let it go? Maybe. When? I don't know. What you're now feeling? I don't, I don't know. Can you allow it? I guess. Could I let it go? Yeah, I guess. Would I let it go? I guess. When? I don't know. And then you get to the place of what is your now feeling? Confused. Could I allow it? Yeah. Can I let it go? Yes. Would I let it go? Yeah, I'll let it go. When? Now. So the whole idea is you can say those sentences, and usually it, it may take two or three times for you to really get to when you're going to let that go. That helps you shift it so that you can shift it and get out of reaction. So that you're able to come to the place of, I'd rather be happy than right. Okay, let, can I say something? Sure. Please. Um, what if just looking at that, if <clears throat> I'm, I was, I think she said her name was Patricia. I'm not sure. Um, the other lady was saying that, um, you know, you weren't there for me when I needed you. That's somebody saying that to me, <clears throat> my now feeling would be, and to be honest, yeah, I wasn't there for you. Like I should have been. Okay. So what's that feeling? Um, well, what is that now feeling? It's, yeah. it's acceptance, I guess it's, it's, well, when it's, you say I'm not, I'm not defending it. I'm, I'm accepting that I did wrong. Right. So what I'm, what, see the feeling there is 
if you boil it all down, the actual feeling is shame or guilt. Would you agree? You feel guilty okay. that you weren't there. You felt the shame that you did. You were. You should have been there, right? Okay. Is that true? Somewhat, yeah. Okay. So what you're wanting to uh, do is identify the feeling of it. Um, acceptance, I understand that. That's what you want to get to is you're accepting, yeah, you're right. I should have been there. But anytime you say I should have X whatever, what that can do, Mary Fran, it can set you up, okay, for feeling that you did something wrong and you it may or may not have been wrong or right it doesn't matter at this point what matters is that what it does is it brings up guilt or shame oftentimes when you use those words or that you're feeling and if you're feeling somewhat shamed or somewhat guilty about it okay then you can go through the questions uh you know can you let it go can you let the guilt go can you would you let it go yes, i could let it go yes mm -hmm. okay perfect and when so if you say now, that would be the time, you know, you can say now, I'll let it go. But it yeah, because happen. I didn't, I'm thinking of a real situation. Right. At the time, I didn't, I, I did what I thought was best for all the people involved. And I, I chose something differently than what that person wanted. And I, I, if I had to do it again, I would probably do the same thing again. Okay. All right. Well, and that's it. And it's not whether it is. So again, the whole it didn't point, feel good to be to have to do that, but I kind of had no choice. I was in a yeah. decision making mode. Yeah. Well, and but, again, here's the thing you want to remember about uh, guilt. So what I do is I, I like to go down. I like to boil it all down to the emotional part of that. OK. And anytime you go to guilt or shame especially guilt guilt demands punishment you've heard me say this all of you dead essence of being guilt demands punishment and so what ends up happening if you're vibrating guilt in any way about something whatever whether it's justified or not okay if you're vibrating the energy of guilt then what you're vibrating out is you're saying punish me and what ends up happening is you attract things or people to punish you or you self-sabotage so you punish yourself What's the opposite of guilt? Innocence. 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 Okay. And I know this is this is a very deep concept if you're not, I mean, just talking about it in five minutes here. But the opposite of guilt is innocence. And the only way that you're not going to keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again, if you want to feel more and more innocent and you want people to see your own innocence because you get to see more of it and more of it and more of it, okay, then that is what you're going to vibrate more. And you won't attract people that punish you and you will not self-sabotage because you're innocent. Does that make sense? make a little bit of sense Marie Fran or very much so yes yeah so it's it's all and it's this is all learning and remember what I said about love when there's a lot of love present it brings up everything unlike love for the purpose of healing it it's an opportunity for us to look at ourselves and say oh there it is again there's that guilt again or there's that shame again I'm going to heal this within me. So it gives us an opportunity to do that. And you go to the opposite, which is innocence. And one of the things you can do, if you know that's you, and you know that that perhaps happens with a lot of you, especially when you're family, is look and stand in front of a mirror and you say to yourself, every morning you are innocent. Every morning, make it a ritual. Every morning when you're brushing your teeth, just look at yourself and say, you are innocent. Whether you believe it or not, whether you think this is stupid or not, whether you really feel it or not. And one of the ways you can really access that and engage in that and really allow it more is get a picture of yourself when you're a little boy or little girl and put it up on the mirror and look at it. 
and look at that little innocent person and say to them, you are innocent because you can access it that way. You can see their little face. All they've wanted is to be loved and accepted and safe and know that they matter. So you can look at yourself when you're a little person, tell them you are innocent. Then you look at yourself and say the same thing in the mirror. You are innocent. And then you change it to, I am innocent. You can do that every day. Look at the little person. You are innocent. You are innocent in the mirror. I am innocent. And it's just a little ritual that you could do every single day and watch how that shifts your energy. And then you start believing it, perhaps a little more and a little more, and you get to see the new evidence that that's true. What and would you say the definition, excuse me for a second, what would you say the definition of self-sabotage is? Um, well, the more important question to answer is how do you do <laughs> Everybody self-sabotages. So let's say that I self, uh, I know I'm not supposed to eat something uh, late at night, but I do anyway because I'm feeling bad about myself. So I'm going to eat something that's sabotaging myself. Okay. I'm doing kidding. the opposite of what you know is correct. Yeah. I mean, that's one, to me, that's one sabotage. Is there anybody else want to share? Uh, yeah, I can share. I actually learned this in um, Passionate Manifestation. When um, in one exercise, you asked me, do you always come in second, Elisa? And it's because I was afraid of shining and being seen. And I would sabotage success and would come in second so many times ah. contracts grants jobs runner up got it bridesmaid yeah not anymore though not right. yeah. recently i know i know i know you've shifted for sure but yeah that's a great example too so everybody self-sabotages differently and you don't even know you're doing it half the time because it's subconscious until you do okay that makes sense yeah, thank you. Great. So these are tools that I'm giving you um, for resolving conflicts, for um, asking yourself these questions, how you can have a better communication or harmony in the holidays and just watch yourself, you know, be present and just be an observer. Am I, would I rather be worried and happy today? And so you can actively listen and observe other people so it will keep you from being reactionary and tell your truth with compassion and the way to do that is to say for me the truth is and it's not blaming them so that's standing in your power standing in your truth and again remember this might be the last time you see them and it'll demonstrate your own innocence even if they don't understand it even if you don't understand it even if they don't want to talk to you that way Everybody wants the same thing. They want to be loved. They want to know they matter. And they want to be appreciated and accepted for who they are. Agreed? Yeah. So take that opportunity during the holidays, everybody, to tell them your truth. Heal whatever it is, because guess what? It keeps coming up. And it's going to keep coming up and it may keep coming up with the same people or it may be the same thing, but a different face. Until you heal it within you, because you have the ability and the power to shift anything of your thoughts, your beliefs or your actions. You are in control of that. Does that make sense, everybody? Helpful? Very much so. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. I'm glad I saw, I see some other people joining us and welcome, welcome. You can go back and listen to the recording. Those of you who um, are listening to the recording, uh, hello. <laughs> and uh, as I said in the beginning, Elisa is one of our coaches. Um, she's, she does a lot of different things. She does a human design. She does Reiki. She's a mental health advocate. She's been involved in a lot of the political sphere and, and lobbying and uh, journalists and She's she's an all around kind of classy girl, and uh, she's one of our 
essence of being coaches and you'll be getting an email in the next couple of weeks everybody just to say hey if you want a, if you want a, a complimentary uh 30 minute session with her um she's available just to connect and she's offering that so i think that's brilliant thank you elisa for doing that you're welcome happy to so is there anything else you want to say about that yeah, I mean, I think the big thing is a lot of what I do with my coaching is I uh, coach people who have been in the limelight. You know, I was a, a journalist and a lobbyist for several years, and I think a lot of people have a fear of shining in their authentic way, and that's what I love helping people do. So using your voice and having the courage to tell your story. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. We teach what we learn, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I'm teaching people how not to make fun of me. Okay. So as, and you'll understand that if you go back and listen, those of you who joined us late. Um, okay. So our next, our next year, we're starting a whole nother year. I can't believe it's going to be 2023. It'll be January 18th. It's always the third Wednesday of every month. Okay. Um, and we're going to keep doing this if people keep uh, joining us. And like I said, we have 80 people registered. I guess holidays are, you know, getting away sometimes, but they'll listen to it. And also mm -hmm. you can go and look, listen to our um, podcast at essenceofbeing.com. You can see all of the stuff that we do. And the next play shop we're having, everybody, is January 13th through the 15th in Texas. Woohoo! And uh, Patty signed up for it. So it's going to be higher vibes, which is a little bit different than our normal essence of being play shops that we do. Higher vibes is a little more esoteric and it's more on the energy side. Okay. And it's more of finding your gifts and your um, connections. Okay. And how to manage energy so that you're not feeling tired or overwhelmed or stretched or shut down and be able to use your gifts in the world and to understand them better okay so it's pretty cool so definitely join us if you want um in texas january 13th to the 15th just go to essenceofbeing.com look at the schedule of events and check out all the other different things and if you want to really dive into more communication uh, there's a self-directed nine-week class that we've put together that's videos and play sheets and audios and meditations and subconscious beliefs and all kinds of stuff. If you go to essenceofbeing.com slash EOC course, okay? EOC means essence of communication. EOC course. C O U R S E. So that's essenceofbeing.com slash E O C course. You can go check that out. It's a nine week self directed one that you can use and just stay on top of this. So if it gives you like a ton of other things that you can do each week or each day if you want, if you're, if you're really into it, if you're hardcore. Okay. So I want to just honor our time commitment. So this is our hour. So we're at the top of the hour. And uh, I want to thank all of you who did join us live uh, for this. I think Jane dropped off, I think. And we had Denisha and Sue and Keisha joined us. So welcome all of you who joined at the end here and lo would love to have you go back and listen to the recording. And anybody have anything else they want to say before we leave? Any questions or comments or thoughts? Happy holidays. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes, same to everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. I dressed for the occasion. It's our little happy, Merry Christmas, <laughs> happy holidays, Great. happy Hanukkah, all of that. Love all of you who could join us. And remember, you make a difference. And definitely what you focus on expands. And I'll see you at Essence of Being or Higher Vibes or next power hour so see you soon all Take right care, everybody bye bye, bye everybody bye bye, bye, -bye. thank you